Okay, so we got another video. So many ideas, and I narrowed it down to these, even though I still have two more pages of ideas. Um, okay, so there are a few on here that I have talked about. That's why I'm going to kind of hit them uh, quickly. So uh, one of them, which is fairly quick, uh, somebody asked me about how to manage two sports, like running and training or triathlon, uh, um, marathon and, and training. I run every day. Uh, if I wanted to run a marathon or a half marathon, I could do it. So you can run every single day, but then also train for a sport. And I do resistance training and I also do jiu-jitsu. My style of training is what I do to hold on to my as much lean muscle tissue as I need. Um, lifting super heavy is not needed for jiu-jitsu, but it's needed for me in my mind because I like it. And then jiu-jitsu, I'm healthy and I have good stamina and I'm strong. And even though it's not about strength in jiu-jitsu, um, I'm flexible because of my style of training. So you could do many different things, just as long as like one doesn't completely contradict the other, which Again, as I mentioned, I run every single morning anywhere from five to seven miles, depending on the day of the week that it is. I still train and I still do jiu-jitsu and everything works. So that's that. Um, what motivates me? And people have asked me a lot and I've made a number of videos on that and they ask for some advice on how to keep themselves motivated. You have to find something that every day is going to motivate you. Like, every minute of my day is motivated towards the next moment. Like, I wake up in the morning, I'm motivated to answer my emails because I'm so excited to give people positive feedback, to correct a mistake if they made one, so that at the end of every week, they're always moving in the right direction. That motivates me. Boom, as soon as I'm done with that, my next motivation is I can't wait to get on the treadmill and get my run. Then my next motivation, I can't wait to eat my oatmeal and my egg whites. Then my next motivation, I can't wait to go to the studio, and on and on and on. So there's motivation throughout the day that every next minute of my day is motivated and I enjoy each moment. I am only involved in critiquing food logs in the morning. When I train my clients, that is what I do. There's nothing else. When I do jujitsu, that is the only thing. When I'm training, no phone. That's it. That's all I do. Headphones in, hat down low like my picture yesterday on Facebook if you guys are on there and Instagram and Twitter. Um, like everything has its own um, but then also in the back of my mind for the times that were really this, I mean, there's always something planned because that's a coping skill that I teach people. You got to make sure that every moment of your day is planned. I have and will always have an emotional connection to food. So I still, to this day, even though I've mastered it, I haven't had a cheat in five years since my son was born, over five years. I did a tally on a picture that I posted. It was 1,910 days straight that I had a cheat. And I don't even consider the California roll and the Tostitos that I had the day that I gave birth to my son as like a huge cheat. So, um... But you need like an overall motivation because on the days that maybe you don't have a lot of things planned or it's not a weekday or it's not, you know, like it's a Saturday and yeah, you have a bunch of things planned to maybe do with your family or do with yourself, but it's not like a structured day like a work day is, um, you still need to have a motivation. Like when you're out at a party or when you're, you know, out with your family or whatever, what's going to make me not eat that food? And it's because in the back of my mind, my clients leading by example, not S-U-C-K-I-N-G during my workout is, um, it's not something that I want to happen. So like, that's my motivation. If I look at Tostitos, I see, um, or if I look at bad food in general or too much sodium, I see a harder run. I see, you know, me not being able to demonstrate. And my clients say all the time, you make all the exercises look easy. Well, yeah, duh, because I want you to have, it's not like, oh my God, there's no way I can ever do it like Jen. Yes, there is. If you continue to practice, I didn't look like this. I was terrible at push-ups. I tell people all the time. But because I was terrible, just like my video, Train Your Weaknesses More, they now I'm good at push-ups. So now when I demonstrate a, like a reach push-up or a crush push-up, I crush it. And then clients are like, oh my God, I'm never going to be able to do it like that. Or, oh my God, like I said, you make it look so easy. Because I want you to be motivated to want to try it. If I can't even do it, then what's going to motivate you to want to do it? Hey, my trainer can't even do it and now she wants me to. That's what I don't want. That's what motivates me. Not being in the hospital. That's what motivates me. Not, I already work hard. 
maintaining goal is not easy. And I will say that over and over and over and over again. I do not want to have to work any harder than I work right now because I already work hard. Some guy yesterday came up to me in the gym. It was brief for a second. I wasn't, that's not why I posted the picture because I didn't mind because I was quick. And he said, he like, he went like this and I took it out and I smiled and I know who he was. And he goes, what are you training for? And I said, nothing. I'm training for my health. And he goes, you're not training for like a triathlon or a competition or anything. And I said, no. And he goes, I see you in here every workout killing it. And I said, what's the point in doing it if you're not going to do it 100%? And he goes, oh, I got to get more like that. And that's the way that it is. So like, it doesn't matter when you see me. It doesn't matter if it's Thursday. It doesn't matter if it's October. It doesn't matter if it's right before the summer season. I'm training hard every day for my health. And if I eat bad, or if I have a cheat, or if I don't do something, or if I give in and I'm lazy, it's going to be harder. It's always going to be harder. And I don't want it to be any harder than it is, because it already is harder. Yesterday, almost every movement that I did, my body was shaking. I was upside down doing shoulder presses with my feet on the ball, and I was determined to do the number that I had in my mind. And I stood there upside down for like seven seconds in between reps because I refused to put my knees down. I refused to not go completely inverted. I refused to stop until I got to that number, that my body was shaking like like this and another person came up to me and they're like oh my god like I saw your body quivering and I'm like and that's how I train so that's what motivates me you have to find something that's going to be in the back of your mind at every minute of your day and then keep yourself busy as hell because that really does help that coping skill truly helps have something that you have to do after everything that you either eat or the next thing or whatnot um I've done a video on organizing and time management and somebody asked me how the heck I fit so many things in in my day. The first thing's first. Because I'm healthy, I have energy to be more efficient at things. So maybe if I wasn't as healthy, instead of me doing 15 things in a day, I could do 10. So then I feel overwhelmed because I'm missing out on five things that I can do. And that's the same thing with you. Right now, if you are not 100% eating healthy, or my 90-10 rule, 90% eating healthy, training hard, getting in your workouts, doing something every day, not having cheats more than once a week or possibly once every two weeks. Like, you can, you're can, you working out to, I mean, I mean your, your day is 50 to 75% as efficient as it can be. So when you're talking about, I need to have m more organization, you need to make lists, that's the biggest thing, I, I have a thousand post-its and lists. I mean, like, even look at this. Like, it's already written out for me, and it took me five seconds for me to just write down what I wanted to talk about today. My whole day is planned. Like, what am I going to do? This, 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 this. And I have things to do today, even though it's Saturday. Um, all day, I'm all the way planned up until I go out to dinner with my husband, because we have things that we're doing in the middle of the day. Whatever. We're not even going to get into that. Um, but you need to have a, you need to have lists. And then when you're done with them, you check them off. As I scribbled off, these are the subjects that I already talked about. If this was my to-do list, I would scribble it off. I had three reminders on my phone of something that I had to do before I got on the treadmill, after I answered food logs. I have something that I have a reminder that I'm going to do after this video is over and then my regular day. And those things have to get done today. So I will not let the day go by without them getting done. And then there are a few things at the end that if I can squeeze it in, I'll squeeze it in. If not, I can do them tomorrow. So there are like always a few things at the end of your list that can get done the next day. But, uh, but as I mentioned, I, the reason why I can get so many things done is because my day is managed. I refuse to let anything get in anything else's way. If I have a call set up for 2 o'clock, I'm not going to do anything for 20 minutes. I'm not going to do anything that could take longer than 15 minutes 20 minutes before it. So nothing ever overlaps. I'm never late for anything. If I say I'm going to call you at 1.59 or 2 o'clock, as soon as my phone hits, I click send. Like literally people have said when we do our coaching calls, oh my God, like my clock just said 2 o'clock and then it rang. And that's what I wait for. Um, and then... Uh, one of our clients who just recently opened up a new business, and if you're, um, uh, if you own your own business, if you run a business, if you manage a business, if you just have two jobs or anything, we all understand how crazy it is. But you have got to at some point say, you know, 
you, and, and this is more like directed a little bit towards you, but uh, towards her, you know who you are, and everybody else, like you have to get to the point where it's, you're not the only one. So you have to start learning how to delegate responsibilities. Um, if you are the owner and you're a sole owner and you have no support, then I, I understand. But you need to also make sure to, if you get up 30 or 40 minutes earlier just to get something done, even if it's at your house, if you take a break in the middle of the day, if you get it done late at night. I have a client that works out at 1030 at night. Because that's the only time that she can. Because she starts early, early, day, like her, her day starts at like 7 o'clock when it comes to like work, work, work. Um, I have other clients that work out at, I have a client that works out at 3.30 in the morning. Um, like literally, you get it, you fit it in where you can fit it in. And if your day is productive and if you work, work out, you get in your good workout and you eat good and you prepare and you're eating small meals throughout the day at this 17 hour work day that will eventually go down. It's a new business. Um, and, uh, and it is something that you just have to get together. Um, somebody that works that many hours needs to try to find some time. We all, no matter what, whether it's new, existing, or whatnot, the, the, the reason why we're in the positions that we're in is to be able to live a little bit more comfortably and, and take eventually, take some more time for ourselves. Um, and that's something that you, you have to start doing as well. Um, but when you squeeze in and sacrifice like there's a video somebody tagged me and when you want to be successful just as much as you need to breathe like that's when you're going to be successful so if you make some sacrifices and maybe you get a little less sleep just to get in your workout eventually things will start coming together and then you'll feel better and then you know, maybe you'll be more efficient at some of the things. But right now, all you're thinking about in the back of your mind is you're thinking about how stressed you are about your business. You're also in the back of your mind, like all upset because you're not getting in your workouts. Maybe you aren't planning your day to maybe prep food. This I don't know to maybe prep food and maybe you're not eating as healthy as you could. Maybe now because of those things and then just stress in general, you're not getting good sleep and then that's affecting everything. So it's one thing at a time, but you have to come first. No matter what, you have to take care of your health. Working out is not selfish, um, and maybe it is. I mean, it's not like you're putting yourself ahead of somebody and you're saying, screw you, and you're, like like I'm saying to my son, you know, oh, mommy's not going to play with you because i got to run. No, I'm running before my son even wakes up. So, and I'm doing that on purpose because I need to be selfish to take care of me so I could be a better mommy to him. So um, I hope that those subjects, this is 13 minutes long, there's a lot more, there's going to be plenty more videos, I'm so excited, I'm going to do a video a day until I'm done with all the subjects, so thank you all for your, all your ideas, if you're on Facebook, if not, then you guys just enjoy these videos, so I'm going to ask Koa again, because I know he gypped us in the last video, Koa, you want to come say hi? Okay, he's tired. Um, all right, but you know, I love you and you know, he loves you. He's just, uh, chilling. I don't know why he's so tired. He's just being lazy. Um, okay. So I love you and go do work.